to a gentleman who has been long associated with not only the sport of golf, but golf on the BBC. Delighted to say that legendary BBC commentator Peter Alice joins us on Five Live. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Hello, hello. I'm just wiping the tears away. Well, I was going to ask you, Peter, how, how do you reflect on the news that no longer on the BBC as it has been for such a long time? Well, it saddens me. Of course, I've been working for them since 1961. But what really saddens me is I think uh, all golfers throughout Britain and Europe um, will, will miss the BBC and, say, and be saddened that it, uh, about its going. And there are all sorts of offshoots that can pop up from this. Uh, uh, golf clubs uh, uh, who've been used to watching BBC or the Open Championship by many of them around here, when, the, when it's on the BBC, on, particularly on the weekend, they have a barbecue and they all go around and 70, 80, 100 people watch the golf. Mm -hmm. And they're paying four or 5,000 pounds a year for the privilege of a, of a license to watch Sky. And that will all go, or will, it will be dented in a lot of golf clubs. I don't think they'll bother with the, the with Sky just to watch Sky. And also the sponsors for uh, HSBC and the Rolex and all the rest of it. Particularly if the BBC are just going to have highlights, you can't, you don't linger too long on what's going on round and about. So the poor old sponsors aren't going to get much of a look in, and that they might lose that. And I, I would worry if I was on the committee that decided this great thing at the R and A, because you can't blame it all on Peter Dawson. The newspapers seem to believe that the secretary, Peter Dawson, makes all the decisions, which is far from the truth. He's got a committee. So I think we let, if we let all the golfers know where they live, they could go and hit divots in their front lawn or something like that to, just to be annoying. But there we are, that's the way it goes. That's, they call it progress. But, but, Peter, it does come down to money, and, and Sky Sports is able to pay £10 million a year for coverage of a huge event, and, and they'd say in their defence that they can pour more money into golf and, and will hopefully make up for the fact that it might not be watched by so many people. What, what are they going to... I don't know what you mean by that. I don't... I think, by the way, I think they're paying a lot more than £10 million. It wouldn't surprise me if it's near at £25 million. But uh, that's another story. But the, the, the proud boast of the RNA was we're, the go golf is in our hands. We are the guardians of the game. We've taken it to India and China and helped to get it in the Olympic Games. Well, uh, I believe that charity beg begins at home, and it would be nice to have looked after our home players here. I can quite understand the money, and don't think I'm degrading Sky. They do the most fabulous job. They put on two or three hundred tournaments a year on television, men's, women's, boys, seniors, girls, Asian, every, everything you can wave a spear at. I think it's quite remarkable what they do. But I think, to, again, to have people say, well, of course, Sky's presentation, uh, camera work is so much better. It's the same pool of freelance camera men that work for everybody, which rather amuses me. And also the fact that I agree their presentation is much jazzier than the BBC. They do have many, many more gizmos and things yes, and bits got, and pieces. They're good at graphics, aren't they? They've got quite a lot of graphics. Fantastic. They do all that. <laughs> and, they, and they've got six or seven channels to show sport yeah. on. Then you've got Eurosport, two or three. Then you've got BT. You know, the BBC, poor old BBC just can't compete. But it still saddens me that they Peter. didn't fight a little bit harder to keep it. Perhaps they did fight harder, mm. in their opinion. I'm sure they did. But it, as I said before, it's like playing poker with Warren Buffett and Donald Trump. And you think you've got a few quid until they bring their wallets out. And that, no matter how long you play the game, they're going to beat you. And that's the situation with Sky. What do you think British golfers will think of it, our top British golfers? Oh, I'm not worried so much about the top golfers. I'm worried about the club golfers, the people who... Uh, we, I would say this is going to affect at least two million, two and a half million people in this country alone. Mm -hmm. uh, because we'll only have... If it continues the way it is, I think we'll have little bits and pieces of the Masters. We'll have the women's solely on, on uh, BBC, I hope, the Women's Open Championship. I think and the women's is part of this deal, isn't it, with mm. Sky, yeah. Peter? I, th what, I, think what is? The I, think, I think it might well be. I'm not 100% sure. We have a man that can tell us, yeah. actually. Well, if, if that's the case, then it's the end of everything. The BBC might as well pack their bags and steal into the night. It will be on Five Live Radio, all of well, it. Well, that, that's good, but I mean, it would, if that is the case and they've lost out on the women's as well, uh, it would be a glorious place to finish at St Andrews and say goodbye there and then. Be a glory. Everyone else has finished at St Andrews, Watson, Nicholas... Rivino, everyone, so it might be a good good place to finish it all. Are you talking about you personally as well, Peter? I think everything, everybody, if you say... <laughs> so this will be your last Open, do you think, will it? Oh, I don't know. I don't, well, I've only got one more to go, and I'm, I'm uh, not a spring chicken anymore, but uh, I still have... Uh, I'm, from the chin up, I'm fantastic. From the chin down, everything's a bit... 
a bit knackered, but uh, that's another story. Well, Peter, I appreciate you joining us on Five Live. Stay there if you would, because we'll get a few more details on this. From our golf, I'd love to hear them, yes. Our golf correspondent, Ian Carter, uh, joins us now. If you're just joining us on Five Live, by the way, we're reflecting on the news that Sky Sports has won the rights for live television coverage of the Open Golf Championship from 2017, ending what will be a 61-year association with BBC Television. The centre was saying, though, golf coverage will continue on Five Live. Five Live retains the radio rights for the coverage. But, Ian, I'm, I'm sure you were listening to Peter Alice there. It is a, it's a momentous day. For, for for golf in the UK, isn't it? Well, it is. Yes, um, it's a, it's a it's a real shame that uh, we're not going to have live coverage on on BBC Television. I think for an awful lot of golf fans, uh, and they will feel, as Peter was saying there, uh, greatly disappointed that they can't see it uh, live. I mean, there is uh, some good news in that there will be prime time highlights on BBC from uh, eight till ten in the evening, so that will attract big audiences. From our point of view, great news that uh, the the five live coverage continues and I think that that will grow in importance as a result of of this deal in the way that uh, it has in cricket with test match special and uh, and of course cricket being live on on Sky Television um, I've seen absolutely no word that the women's uh, open is involved in this deal okay uh, at that all. was something else so that I'd I, heard I, I my think, apologies um, yeah that's okay and <clears throat> no go ahead that's news that, that's news to me yeah. anyway if, uh, if if that is the is the case but I think what's happened here um, is that clearly the RNA have have been attracted by the extra money that Sky can offer the uh, poker analogy that Peter so eloquently put there um, is is absolutely right and bear in mind this context as well the USGA which is the parallel mm. governing body if you like in the United States and it runs the US Open uh, last year they signed a deal worth one point two billion dollars over 12 years with Fox Sports. Now, the RNA financially has to keep some kind of uh, pace with the, the, the USGA uh, or run the risk of, of falling into a, a degree of irrelevance in terms of the world game. So I, I think that that has, has turned their head somewhat. I remember talking to Peter Dawson when this deal came around and I said, is that a game changer? And he said, it might very well be. And I think this announcement today <coughs> is, is evidence of that. Are there real concerns, uh, Ian, on the impact of participation levels in golf? Because I know there have been similar concerns in, in cricket and you were likening the, the way that the coverage changed with regards to that sport. Yes, I, I think that is a big concern for everyone that's uh, involved in the development of the game and it's something that will need to be addressed in this new era that we're, we're entering because we have seen participation figures uh, steadily fall over recent years and I think that there's no coincidence that that has coincided with basically a, a whole raft of British tournaments that used to be shown on the BBC now being shown on satellite television rather than on a free-to-air uh, basis. I'm talking about events like the PGA Championship, the Scottish mm. Open. Um, you can think back to the old days of the, the tournament at the Belfry, the World Match Play. You know, these were tournaments that meant that golf was appearing on BBC television um, you know, with real regularity throughout the, the season. And that helped give the game a great deal of momentum. And, and that has now been lost and, and it's gone further now with uh, this news as far as the Open Championship is concerned. Ian, st uh, stay with us because uh, I know you're covering the Roy McIlroy uh, court case as well in Dublin, so we'll get some information from you on that in a moment. I just want to go back to, to Peter Alice. Peter, you've, you've heard Ian um, give a bit of detail and a bit of context to the news today. Um, would you go as far as to say that you, you were quite strong on the RNA a few moments ago. Have they let golfers down in general by this deal, do you think? Well, I never thought the, the Masters in America, I always thought that I've said it many times, they didn't have a money tree at their disposal, they had a money orchard. So I didn't think they would ever sell out and take on Sky and squeeze the BBC as they have done. I didn't think the RNA would because they always pontificate about how they're the guardians of the game and taking it all north, south, east and west and looking after things. I know they give a couple hundred thousand quid to some golf course that's been washed into the sea by the Atlantic Ocean. I know they do lots of lovely, lovely things and they t send teams quite, sometimes in my opinion, quite irrelevant uh, to South America or wherever, but they're spreading the gospel of golf. And now when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, uh, they've dipped their hands in the money and, and that's it. And uh, I don't think there'll be a golfer. Uh, there might be a couple of hundred golfers in Britain and are many in Europe that won't be bitterly disappointed at this news today.
Peter, thanks very much for talking to us on Five Live, and uh, we'll see you at a golf tournament somewhere. Uh, probably the Alliance Championship at Hindhead. Okay. <laughs> Bye -bye. Look forward to it. Thank you, Peter. Which is Peter's local call. Indeed. <laughs>